we're going to be running the draw on the staging server to show how the system is supposed to be working. First thing we want to do is go to the event console in the smart scheduler. Now, one very important item is that we need to finalize and confirm our people problems and our division problems before we run the scheduler. People problems are people who have not checked in, they're participant issues. So as we can see, the system is going to identify the people that have not checked in. And as before mentioned, we can click on them and take them out of the event simply by moving them to the remove from event division. The reason we're using a remove from event division is so that we can bring them back in case something went wrong. Now, once people are removed from divisions, we can go to the division issues. Division issues are divisions that have zero athletes, which we want to remove, or divisions that have one athlete, meaning they will not be able to be scheduled. As we can see, we have 68 total divisions for this particular test case on the staging server where athletes uh, are, not, uh, are having one person divisions and will not be scheduled. So just for this particular test, we're going to combine a couple of divisions. So what we want to do is we want to click on a particular person with the green button we're able to filter the age and the gender which brings us the divisions and we can here scroll through and find a division where there are athletes inside that match the criteria of that particular athlete uh, as you can see here in his age we do not have any other divisions with one athlete inside so we can choose to go one age higher or a different gender or a different skill level in order to find a place for that athlete to compete. And as we look through, we can just filter these ones to say, show us from one plus athlete divisions. And this will help us to understand that actually in one age group plus, there's a female 86 kilogram. She's a little bit light and a little bit young, but maybe if she has no other choice, she's willing to compete in that division. After we've selected the division that this athlete can go to, we can choose the options to notify the athlete, to rename the division, to call it a catch division, for example, and we can even delete division A. And once we click merge, the system will automatically put the athlete into the new division. Let's do that a couple more times so that we can have some divisions that can be scheduled. Now I'm going to place people together into one division so that we have at least one division that will be scheduled with many athletes in it. Here we simply select a number of them. And for this, these athletes, we're going to select all of them at the same time, and we're going to place all of them into a tykes division. Let's say into this particular division and I will call it the catch division. So once we went through and we have solved our issues with our divisions and we have no more one athlete divisions, we can search for zero athlete divisions. And from zero athlete divisions, we click remove, we select all, and we know there are 365 divisions. So you write 365. And then once we press remove, we have all of the zero athlete divisions gone. The reason we do this is to keep the tournament clean and ensure that when the people are searching the tournament, they can only see the divisions that are going to work. In this particular case, we have 36 divisions with two or more participants in them. Once we have finished deleting our zero athlete divisions, we're ready to move on to the smart scheduler. Now the smart scheduler will show us that now we have 20 divisions that are not ready because we have one participant in them. And we have 37 divisions that are ready to be scheduled. We need to look over the settings here. By setting the first day of competition, which we want to have, let's say tomorrow is our first day of competition, then we must select from the rings that we added, the rings that we will schedule this event into. And we simply know the number of, of games or bouts per ring per day will give us how many days our event will be according to those rings. So. In this case, let's say we put 20. Since we have two rings, it means 40 per day. And let's see what that gives us. Now we can open up and add a, a couple more features. Um, pretty much you want to try to use the default features because they're going to be exactly how the IFMA standard is. 
And once we press this draw button, the system is going to continue and is going to prepare the data and schedule it for us across our divisions. This first schedule that it's doing for us is going to give us an understanding of how the tournament is going to look. Now, we can always rerun the scheduler and change those settings. So, for example, if we see that the 20 bouts per ring per day give us a seven-day tournament and we're looking for a two-day tournament, well, then we know we should go to 40 bouts per day per ring, thereby giving us as close as possible to the final result that we're looking for. And the target of the smart scheduler is that we get as close as possible to the final result so that we can move on from there to the bulk bout manager which is our next step in order to fine tune the bouts or the bout groups into particular days and rings to ensure that our competition flows how we want it to flow before we publish Currently being on the staging server, this process is running slower than it will run on the production server. However, you can see that the system is going through and creating the brackets for each division. And at the same time, it's creating the master schedule, creating the division for bouts on rings and on days in order to provide us our schedule. So now we get the message that we have 80 bouts over 37 divisions that are scheduled. And we can view these by clicking on View Master Schedule or by clicking on View Division. However, I prefer to go to the Bulk Games Manager directly from here, where I can see the days of competition and the division in the rings of the bouts. So because I put there 20 bouts, it's a two-day tournament. And we can see that it started scheduling on the 26th because that was the day that I inserted as the first day. Now, what we're able to do here is we're able to drag and drop and add days and remove days. So for example, here, if I insert a day, I can insert the fourth day, which is here. And having a fourth day, it, I can drag and drop different bouts and different groups from day to day, from ring to ring. The system is automatically making a big separation. So I have a couple of control options. The first is I can search and find and filter different rounds, different groups on the top here. But at the same time, I can just click on one particular division and it'll filter for me only that division. So I can see that for this adult female division, I have the first round of three rounds on the first day, the second round here and the third round here. If I want them to be on the same ring, I just drag and drop simply and then it's going to align that for me there. Also, I can click on this button showing the actual bouts to see who are going to be inside this round. And it gives me a very clear understanding of how the division is going to go. I'm also able to sort, if I'd like to sort this alphabetically. So if I'm moving around the bouts and I say, well, actually I'd like to have, you know, the tykes to go at the beginning of the day. All I need to do is drag the tykes up to the beginning of the day and drop them. And the system will automatically amend for that and change for that. Once I have this exactly how I want it to be, let's say on the last day I want to have just one ring, for example, and I've dragged in all of the all of the items, then I want to do a renumber so that the system can give me a fresh bout numbers. And once I'm ready, I move on to the last phase, which is the publish print phase. Here I have one last verification. I can see how many bouts I have on each day. If I'm happy with it, I can publish it. At the same time, I can also, before publishing, go to the master schedule and I can check every single division. So from the master schedule, I can see here who's fighting who. And in each particular division, I can also go to my competition And in the competition itself, I'm able to see all of the scheduled divisions that are here showing up. And for the scheduled divisions, I'm able to click on View Schedule 
in order to confirm that I'm happy with the way that the schedule looks. So if we look here for a division which has, let's say, some more athletes on it, like this one with five athletes, since we'll have a bigger bracket, I can click View Schedule and it will show me here the bracket for this particular division so that I'm able to see if I like who is fighting against who. Now, let's say there's a conflict and I don't want Glass to fight, to fight against Rimble or I'd like to change Kiana with Glass. All I need to do is mouse over the game number, press the Edit and mouse over the other one and press Edit. It opens up new tabs for me and here I'm able to say, actually, this will be Glass here and save. And on the other one, I'm able to say here there will be not Glass but the, the other athlete and press save. And once I've made these two saves, if I go back to my bracket and I refresh, we can see that now I have just changed the athletes around. So you're able, before you publish, to check every single division and to ensure that the draw has went according to the fair plan. Um, one very quick shortcut is that you can click on the menu button here and pull out the all bracket PDF, which prints for you in one PDF every bracket. This will help you to search it faster than just division by division. And when we are ready to finalize this tournament, all we need to do is just click publish and press publish. And now everybody on the internet can see this event. At the same time, we're able here from our menu button to take down the daily schedule. The, and the event schedule and the rosters. Now the daily schedule is interesting because it'll give you for that ring, let's see if it opens in, in this browser window, it'll give you for every ring the breakdown of what bouts are going to take place on that ring so that you can distribute them and the referees or ring operators will know uh, the, the schedule for the ring. So here is the, for example, the ring. So you see ring day one, ring one, day one, ring two, with all the bouts on it, populated. You have the same for day two and so on. So this document, document is generated automatically by the system. Uh, the final item, it will be the scoring. How do you score bouts? You can do a, different, a couple of different steps to score bouts. First is directly on your menu in the admin, you have bouts and here, you're able to select the competition that you're trying to, to score. So in this case, since we just made our draw on staging, we just published it. Here we are able to see all the bouts. And for the bouts that are just scheduled, we can filter by what's scheduled and what competition we're on. We can enter the bout number here on top in order to filter quicker. All we do is click on the menu, press score, and then opens up the score for us, we're able here to add the score from the referees and after every round, press save and have the score updated and the current status updated of how the competition is going. We also have here access to a scoreboard that automatically updates with the answer of what is going on here. Now, the score is a little bit different in this particular case because we're on SIAM FP, which is a United States Multi Federation club, and they are running the uh, United States scoring system, which is a little bit different. When we have finished scoring the rounds, we can press finalize to accept the winner. Or we can override if there is, for example, a blue knockout, the winner is in the color and the reason and finalize. And once we have finalized the bout, then now all that information is public and as well the bracket is updated. From here, we can go back to the master schedule or reset the bout to move on to our next bout. One important item is that your scorekeepers, you should add to your user section under scorekeepers. Adding your scorekeepers here allows them to log into the system and do nothing else other than score those bouts. So if I have a user that I'm adding here, this particular user, I can add by email address. It can be a, a general user as they're using for a ring one or ring two at their organization name, but I'm able here to assign only that particular competition. 
and only that particular division. That means that when they log in and they click on bouts, they will not have more bouts to score, only the bouts that they're supposed to score. I hope this tutorial was helpful and we are at your disposal to support you in making this tournament a success. Thank you very much.